HRC, 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 Hebrew Reader, Hebrew Reader, Hebrew Reader Church. Shalom, 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 shalom. Greetings, greetings, everyone. With today, we are going into the promise and the covenants given to Abraham. There's one oath entirely that was given, and the covenant pertained of different things in that covenant that was given to Abraham. And in the writings of the New Testament, Paul is very educated. He understands the law and his prophets very well. That's right in how he's talking about so many things at once. So this is for us to understand what these promises and covenants were, so that when we move forward, we have a good foundation in knowing what we're reading and dissecting it and understanding according to precept upon precept and according to the law and the testimony. For if we speak not according to that manner, we know Isaiah 8 and 20 tells us no light is in us. That's why we're looking at the light of the law and the testimony to make sure that we understand all things in truth and we rightfully divide the word of truth and show ourselves approved unto Allah and that we may be approved by working all his righteousness, doing the things that are excellent, being instructed out of the law. As Romans chapter 2 verse 18 tells, that we learn what his will is and what is more excellent being instructed out of the law. So with that, let's start with the book of Genesis chapter 11, verse 31. Okay. And then we're going to go to the book of Joshua chapter 13. All right. Let's uh, begin. Uh, 11 and verse 31, please. Okay. Uh, Genesis chapter 11, verse 31. And Terah took Abram his son, and Lot his son of Haran, his son's son, and Chidiah his daughter-in-law, his son Abram's wife, and they went forth with them from Ur of the Chaldees to go into the land of Canaan. And they came unto Haran and dwelt there. So this is where we see Abram had left Ur of the Chaldees. His father took the whole family to the land of Haran. Now we're going to go to the book of Jasher so we can learn what happened between Genesis 11 and 31 to Genesis 12 and 1. Because there's a whole series of events that happened up until that time because the book of Genesis is more a compilation, a summary of right. a lot of events, whereas the book of Joshua goes into more detail. This is why we're so thankful for these records. That's right. right. Joshua chapter 13, please. Uh, what verse? Uh, verse 1. Okay, please. Uh, Joshua chapter 13, verse 1. And Terah took his son, Abram, and his grandson, Lot, the son of Haran, and Chidiah, his daughter-in-law, the wife of his son, Abram, and all the souls of his household, and went with them from Ur Kastim to go to the land of Canaan. And when they came as far as the land of Haran, they remained there, for it was exceedingly good land for pasture, and of sufficient extent of those who accompanied them. And the people of the land of Haran saw that Abram was good and upright with Elohim and men, and that Ahiah Elohim was with him. And some of the people of the land of Haran came and joined Abram, and he taught them the instruction of Ahiah and his ways. And these men remained with Abram in his house, and they had heard to him. And Abram remained in the land three years. And at the expiration of three years, Ahiah appeared to Abram and said to him, I am Ahiah, who brought thee forth from ur and delivered thee from the hands of all thine enemies. And now, therefore, if thou wilt hearken to my voice and keep my commandments, my statutes, and my laws, then will I cause thy enemies to fall before thee, and I will multiply thy seed like the stars of heaven, and I will send my blessing upon all the works of thy hands, and thou shalt lack nothing. So he was letting them know what he needs to do, like what Abram needs to do in order for Ahiah to bring these blessings upon him. Continue. Arise now. Take thy wife and all belong to thee, and go into the land of Canaan, and remain there. And I will be there unto thee for Elohim, and I will bless thee. And Abram rose and took his wife and all belonging to him, and he went to the land of Canaan as Ahiah had told him. 
and Abram was 55 years old when he went from Haran. And there we see already he obeyed the voice of Ahiah. He told him, get up out of this land, and Abram went. There was no questions asked. He was ready. He did what Ahiah commanded him. So then notice, this is when Abram is at a younger age than when we go into Genesis chapter 12. Because he went with just Sarah, his wife, and his household. Right. He did not take a lot with him at this time. All right, let's continue, please. And Abram came to the land of Canaan and dwelt in the midst of the city. And he there pitched his tent among the children of Canaan, inhabitants of the land. And Ahiah appeared unto Abram when he came to the land of Canaan, and said to him, This is the land which I gave unto thee, and to thy seed after thee forever. And I will make thy seed like the stars of heaven, and I will give unto thy seed for an inheritance all the lands which thou seest. This is amazing, because Abram already obeyed his voice by leaving. And he showed this is the land which I gave unto thee. He's right. speaking of something as if it's already happened. Because it right. has already happened in the spirit. It just has to be manifested in the flesh. Right. It's amazing. Continue. And Abram built an altar in the place where Elohim had spoken to him. And Abram there called upon the name of Ahiah. And at that time, at the end of three years of Abram's dwelling in the land of Canaan. In that year, Noah died. As Noah. Continue. In that year, Noah died, which was the 56th year of the life of Abram. And all the days that Noah lived were 950 years, and he died. Right. And Abram dwelt in the land of Canaan, he, his wife, and all belonging to him. And all those that accompanied him, together with those that joined him from the people of the land, but Nahor, Abram's brother, and Terah his father, and Lot, the son of Haran, and all belonging to them, dwelt in Haran. All right, so we see Lot was still in Haran. That further substantiates that this was speaking about before what transpired in Genesis 12. Yeah. We jump to verse 17, please. Okay. And it was in the 15th year of Abram's dwelling in the land of Canaan which is the 70th year of the life of Abram. And we have the time set that he's 70 years old, right? And Ahiah appeared to Abram in that year, and he said to him, I am Ahiah who brought thee out of Erecastum to give thee this land for an inheritance. Now therefore walk before me and be perfect, and keep my commands, for to thee and to thy seed I will give this land for an inheritance, from the river Mithraim unto the great river Euphrates. And thou shalt come to thy fathers in peace in a good age. And then the fourth generation shall return here in this land and shall inherit it forever. And Abram built an altar and he called upon the name of Ahiah who appeared to him. And he brought up sacrifices upon the altar to Ahiah. And now remember this part here because when you go to Genesis 15, we're going to see that at this time when Ahiah is speaking to him in Jasher 13 and 19, he didn't reveal the fullness of what was going to transpire because in Genesis 15, he's going to expound the understanding of what's going to transpire to lead to that fourth generation coming in to the land of Egypt. And this helps us understand that Ahiah, with his prophecies and with his words, sometimes he says things at a certain time and then later he gives the full understanding of what it meant. All right. So Ahiah puts his word in his prophet. We have to go precept upon precept, line upon line here a little there a little to uh, get the full understanding. Because it's a test of our heart to search it out and to pray unto Ahiah for understanding in the name of Yacha. Yes, indeed. All right, let's continue, please. Right. Mm -hmm. And at that time, Abram returned and went to Haran to see his father and mother and his father's household. And Abram and his wife and all belonging to him returned to Haran. And Abram dwelt in Haran five years. So there we see at seven years old, he went back to Haran. And he stayed in Haran for five years. This is why in the book of Genesis 12, we're going to read that he was 75 years old and he left Haran. And now he has been gracious to help us understand that this was actually in Genesis. This was the second time he was leaving Haran. Right. All right. Let's continue in Joshua here. Joshua 13 and where are we 21. At? 21. All right. And many of the people of Haran, about 72 men, Followed Abram, and Abram taught them the instructions of Ahiah in his ways, and he taught them to know Ahiah. In those days Ahiah appeared to Abram in Haran, and he said to him, Behold, 
I spoke unto thee these twenty years back, saying, Go forth from thy land, from thy birthplace, and from thy father's house, to the land which I have shown thee, to give it to thee and to thy children. For there in that land will I bless thee, and I will make thee a great nation, and make thy name great, and in thee shall the families of the earth be blessed. Hmm. In thee shall the families of the earth be blessed. And notice what he's talking about is exactly what we read in the book of Genesis. So we see he was given the promise of the land, and he was told that in him shall the families of the earth be blessed. Yeah. But as we go forward, we're going to understand more and more what Ahaya was referring to, even in that part as well. Continue. Now therefore arise, go forth from this place, thou, thy wife, and all belonging to thee. Also every one born in thy house, and all the souls that thou hast made in Haran, and bring them out with thee from here, and rise to return to the land of Canaan. And we're going to touch at Jubilees chapter 12, verse 25 to 28, so we can get understanding as to why, when Abram goes this time, why Lot came with him. It says, And it came to pass in the fourth year of the fourth week that he spoke to his father and informed him that he would leave Haran to go into the land of Canaan to see it and to return to it. And Terah, his father, said unto him, Go in peace. May the eternal Allahayim make your path straight, and Ahaya be with you, and protect you from all evil, and grant unto you grace, mercy, and favor before those who see you, and may none of the children of men have power over you to harm you, go in peace. And if you see a land pleasant to your eyes to dwell in, then arise and take me to you, and take Lot with you, the son of Haran, your brother, as your own son. The Lord be with thee. And Nahor thy brother, leave with me till thou returnest in peace, and we go with thee altogether. So we see that Haran, son, Lot, went with Abram as his own son, and uh, Nahor and Terah stayed back in the land of Haran. So we have an understanding as to why Lot came with him on this second time. Okay? Chapter 13, verse 25. All right. And Abram rose and took his wife Chidiah, and all belonging to him, and all that were born to him in his house, and the souls which they had made in Haran, and they came out to go to the land of Canaan. And Abram went and returned to the land of Canaan according to the word of Ahiah, and Lot, the son of his brother Haran, went with him. And Abram was seventy-five years old when he went from Haran to return to the land of Canaan. All right, now let's go to Genesis chapter 12 to see now that we have the history of what transpired before that time came, go to Genesis chapter 12 and read about it. As we're building and understanding these promises and the covenants that are given to Abraham. As we see already, the promise of getting the land for his seed, and also in his seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Okay, continue. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. Now Ahiah had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curses thee. And in me shall all families of the earth be blessed. Now notice, Genesis 12 and 1 said that Ahiah had said to Abraham. So it was a reiteration of what he had said to him, 20 years back before he was 75 years old, according to Jasher 13, verse 22 to 24. This helps confirm both records of Genesis and Jasher to be true, as Genesis was just summarizing the things that were said afore in the book of Jasher. Can you continue reading, please? Uh, Genesis 12 and 4. So Abram departed as Ahiah had spoken unto him. And Lot went with him, and Abram was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran. And Abram took Chidiah his wife, and Lot his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered, and the souls that they had gotten in Haran. And they went forth to go into the land of Canaan, and to the land of Canaan they came. And Abram passed through the land unto the place of Shechem, unto the plain of Morah. And the Canaanite was then in the land. And Ahiah appeared unto Abram 
and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. And there builded he an altar unto Ahiah, who appeared unto him. So we hear the promises that he's given, that in his seed shall all nations be blessed, and this land will he give him. Now let's go forward to Genesis chapter 13, verse 14 to 18. Please. Genesis chapter 13, verse 14. And Ahiah said unto Abram, after that lot was separated from him, Lift up now thine eyes, and look from the place where thou art northward, and southward, and eastward, and westward. For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. Mm, and know they said forever, that's an eternal covenant. That's right. And it's going to be an eternity. And we know the eternal covenant, that seed, firstly, all the words that Ahiah speaks are spirit, and right. they are life, as John chapter 6, verse 63 tells us. So we can understand that in the spirit, he's speaking of Yache, his seed is going to inherit it forever, because he's going to have it in the kingdom. Do you want to go into Omenoala? Yes. This covenant, the covenant of in thy seed will all nations be blessed, which brings the Gentiles in, because when he said his seed would be as the stars of heaven, and the sands of sea for a multitude which cannot be numbered. That multitude, according to precept, in Revelation chapter 7, verse 9, there's going to be 144,000 men of Israel. And there's also going to be an innumerable multitude of all nations, kindreds, peoples, and tongues. That innumerable multitude is going to be where that prophecy is going to be fulfilled, that in thy seed shall all nations be blessed. And in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as right. the stars of heaven. And there's a sense of the seashore that cannot be numbered because that multitude of Gentiles cannot be numbered. So right. preceptually, that's where it's going to be fulfilled. And in understanding it, it is Yache that the promises are made. In his seashore, all nations be blessed because no one can partake in the promises unless you have Yache in you. That's right. This is why it said in Isaiah chapter 7, Verse 14, it says, Therefore, Adonai himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. The word Emmanuel is H6005 in the Strong's Hebrew Concordance, and it means, With us is Allah. Or, in the Brownos Briggs, it means Allah with us. Of with us is Allah. This is actually our language because the word Emmanuel is actually Ime, which means with or within, and Ime no, no means the rest. So the in within, located within us, Allah. With located within us is the Allah or Ime Uno, within us, because Uno is us or you all. Mm -hmm. Within us is Allah. So. This why he would be called this is because the understanding will come as Paul was teaching the mystery of the gospel was Mishiach in you right. the hope of glory in Colossians 1 24 to 27 so that title that he had was prophecy that all that are called and will be saved have him in them and we have to have that spirit in us Imen Allah, that we may attain unto the salvation that is in Yache and the promise that was given to Abraham because as Israelites we have to understand physically we are the children of Jacob or Jacob but Jacob was given the name Israel which is Israel he was given that name according to the spirit from his fight with the angel which is a similitude a testimony for us to understand the fight that we have to go through to supplant because Yaakob means to supplant mm. the word ko means to hook and be makes it continuous so Yaakob means he's he's hooking he's grabbing hence he's a heel catcher a supplanter so we our carnal man has to be supplanted that a new man may dwell in us and to put on that new man which is to become that new creature as we've learned in the new testament that new man is coming within us is Imeno Allah you, right. you can see how Yaakob 
one is supplanted, the wicked that's in us is coming out. Mm -hmm. And Imen of Allah, the spirit of Allah, is coming in us. And now we have Miss Yakayache in us. And now we can actually be the name Echre Allah, which means he shall rule as Allah, or he rules with Allah. Because we have Allah in us, Yache. Now we can actually rule as Allah because it's truly Allah ruling within us and breaking down all the bands of wickedness and casting them asunder that we may be able to walk in perfection. So we can understand what it means to be partaking in the covenants of Abraham and to be a true Israelite. That's why Paul was explaining that a Jew is not a Jew that is one outwardly, but a Jew is a Jew that is one inwardly. That's, right. that's in the circumcision which is of the heart according to the spirit. And Gentiles, you can understand what it is to partake in the faith of Abraham by having the circumcision of your heart by believing in Yahweh. So that gives us a good understanding of for Jew and Gentile that we must have Mashiach in us. We must attain to the keeping of the commandments wholeheartedly mm -hmm. and bearing the fruits of those spirits. They are all the characters of Allah Hayyam. But we must emanate as evidence that we abide in the vine. Because mm -hmm. Yachi says, He is the vine, and he that abides in him bringeth forth much fruit. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. All right, let's continue. Uh, Genesis 13, verse 16. And I will make thy seed at the dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. Arise, walk through the land in the length of it and in the breath of it, and I will give it unto thee. Then Abram removed his tent, and came and dwelt in the plain of Mamre, which is Hebron, and built there an altar unto Ahayas. All right. Now, let's go to Genesis chapter 15, please. Remember he had told Abraham in Joshua 13 and 19 that he shall go to his fathers in good old age and peace, and then in the fourth generation, his seed shall dwell in the land. And he's going to give them the land from the river Egypt unto the river Euphrates. Now we're going to see now at this time when Abraham's a bit older, he is going to give him more understanding of what's going to transpire. All right. Uh, Genesis 15, verse 1, please, to 7. All right. Genesis chapter 15, verse 1. After these things, the word of Ahiah came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abram said, Adonai, Allah, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is mine heir. And behold, the word of Ahiah came unto him, saying, this shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thy own bower shall be thine heir. Mm -hmm. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven, and tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. Mm -hmm. And he believed in Ahia, and it was counted to him for righteousness. And he believed that covenant, and, that, and now we understand through the precepts and Ahayah's grace, that, that seed was speaking of Yachi that was going to be multiplied as the stars of heaven. All right. Uh, continue. Verse 7. And he said unto him, I am Adonai that brought thee out of Ur of the Chaldees to give thee this land to inherit it. And he said, Adonai Elohim, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? And he said unto him, Take me an heifer of three years old, and a she-goat of three years old, and a ram of three years old, and a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. And he took unto him all these, and divided them in the midst, and he laid each piece one against another. But the birds divided he not. And when the fowls came down upon the carcass, Abram drove them away. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and lo, a horror of great darkness fell upon him. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in the land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. And we look at the four hundred year prophecy in reference back to that video if you haven't seen it, to understand that it started from Isaac. That four hundred year mark started from Isaac when he was born, thirty years after Abraham had received that 
Oh, so the promise of 400 years of affliction was started with Isaac onto the exodus of the Israelites. Please refer back to that video to understand that. Yeah. All right. And also that nation whom they shall serve. Will I judge? And afterward they shall come out with great substance. And now we know that actually happened because the Israelites came out of Egypt with great substance. Okay. And thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace. And thou shalt be buried in good old age. And in the fourth generation they shall come hither again. For the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. And there we see now he's getting more understanding of what is transpiring. Because when he was told when he was 70, he wasn't told all the intricate details of what was going to transpire. And now he's given understanding that his seed is going to be afflicted 400 years. And then he's given understanding that why it's going to take the fourth generation, which is in the days of Joshua. Because the time of the Amorites had to get to its fullness. Because right. Ahiah does all things in righteousness. He actually gave the Amorites, all those people in Canaan, he gave them opportunity to repent of what they were doing. That's right. He was very righteous in his doing. He, it wasn't just he wanted to finish them off. He gave them opportunity to repent, and they did it. That's why he said the iniquity of the Amorites had to get to its fullness. That's right. All right. Continue. Please. Verse 17. And it came to pass that when the sun went down and it was dark, behold, a smoking furnace and a burning lamp that passed between those pieces. In the same day, I have made a covenant with Abram, saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land, from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates. And then we have more understanding of what Ahiah was telling Abraham. And we see how Ahiah works, where he told Abraham before what he was going to do, but he didn't give him the fullness of it. Then gave him more understanding of what was to result. Yes. Yeah. All right. Let's uh continue on. So we see the covenant of his seed getting the land, and we understand that his seed is Yache, as Galatians three and sixteen says. And the true Israelites are those that are in Yache that have the spirit of Mishiach in them, as Romans chapter two verse twenty nine shows that a true Jew is one that is according to the spirit, as the circumcision of the heart. Hmm. Let's continue to Genesis chapter 17, verse 1 to 21. Genesis 17, verse 1. And when Abram was 90 years old and nine, Ahiah appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am Shaddai Allah. Walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee, and I will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face, and Allah had taught with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. So we see the other part of the covenant. That's right. So this is my covenant. I'm going to give you the land. And now he said, this is my covenant. You're going to be a father of many nations. That's right. And notice, Abraham is not the father of the Canaanites. He's not the father of the... Hamites, he's not the father of the Egyptians, nor right. is he the father of the Cushites. So we have to understand that these are spiritual promises because right. these are people partaking in the faith of faithful Abraham to become his children by faith. And the reason they're becoming his children because they're going to have the spirit of his child according to the flesh, Yache Meshiaka, who is according to the spirit, the son of Allah According to the spirit of holiness by the evidence of the resurrection of the dead. So we can understand by Meshiach Yache's spirit, these nations that are not of the physical bloodline of Abraham are going to partake and become children of Abraham by faith. Hence, they will partake in the faith of faith for Abraham. Okay? Matter of fact, let me give a verse. So. My brothers and sisters, you know, we're not just saying things. Galatians chapter 3, verse 6 says, Even as Abraham believed Allah, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that Allah would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, in thee shall all nations be blessed. Mm. Now this is key here because verse 7 was also confirming the Israelites who are not circumcised. That had grew up as Hellenists. 
So it's the Israelites that are going to partake as they're going to get circumcision of the heart. And verse 8 was confirming the Gentiles who do not have the covenant of circumcision will receive circumcision of the heart by faith. So you can understand what we just talked about how he would be a father of many nations by Meshiach Ayache. Okay. All right. Genesis 17 and 5. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be called Abraham. Mm -hmm. For a father of many nations have I made thee, and I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. He did make nations of him out of his physical loins as well, because we have the Ishmaelites, who they had 12 kings, and then you have the children of Keturah. The Ishmaelites and the Keturahites are known today as what we know as Arabs. Because in Jubilee chapter 20, verse 11 to 13, it says, And Ishmael and his sons, and the sons of Keturah, and their sons, went together and dwelt in Paran, to the entering in of Babel, in all the land which is towards the east, facing the desert. And these mingled with each other, and their name was called Arabs and Ishmaelites. So as Ahaya told Abraham, he would make nations of them, and indeed he did. The children of the east, the children of Keturah, of which Job is one of them. When you read Job chapter 1, you see that he was most renowned of the children of the east, which are the children of Keturah. Right. Okay. Let's continue, please. Verse 7 in Genesis 17. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee. And their generation for an everlasting covenant to be an Elohim unto thee and to thy seed after mm. thee. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession, and I will be their Elohim. From Elohim said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant, therefore thou and thy seed after thee in their generation. Right. This is my covenant which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Mm -hmm. Every man among you shall be circumcised, and ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you. Every man child in your generation, he that is born in the house or brought with money of any stranger which is not of thy seed. He that is born in thy house, and he that is brought with thy money, must needs be circumcised. And my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. And the uncircumcised man-child, whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised, that soul shall be cut off from his people. He hath broken my covenant. And Elohim said unto Abraham, As for Chidie thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Chidie, but Chitty shall her name be. Mm -hmm. Chitty is the word for rule or reign in Igbo language to this day. The same name that Sarah has and it means the same thing to this day. Chitty or Chitty yeah, was her first name and then her name became Chitty, which means queen. The, her name is uh, to be have dominion to rule. Continue. And I will bless her and give thee a son also of her. Mm -hmm. Yea, I will bless her and she shall be a mother of nations. Mm -hmm. Kings of people shall be of her. Then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed. <laughs> and he said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto me that is a hundred years old? And shall Chitty, that is ninety years old, bear? And Abram said unto Elohim, O oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. <laughs> and the word laugh is uh, Chikakwa. When you look in the Hebrew word, Chikakwa. The word chi, na chi o chi. Well, I'm saying I'm laughing. Na chi o chi. That's the root word for Isaac's name. Chi means to laugh. Ka means to exceed, to be a lot. And kwa means to cry. So chikakwa means you're laughing to the point of crying. But you're laughing so hard that you start crying. Mm -hmm. Hence, he said chikakwa. And Isaac's name is ye chikakwa. It means he laughed exceedingly. He, he mocked. Because Abraham was laughing in his heart like, <laughs> he's like, really? Am I going to have seed? You know? Continue. And Elohim said, Chitty thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed. And thou shalt call his name Yichichakwa. 
and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him. And there is in Isaac shall his seed be called. And also many nations shall come from him. So hence he remembered Ishmael as well as he's going to say here. And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him and I will make him fruitful and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he beget and I will make him a great nation. And this is also an admonition for the Ishmaelites. You know, the Arabs, you know, your father, our father Abraham, he asked Ahaya to make sure you live. And Ahaya heard his voice. He desires you to partake in a covenant with him, for you're his children. And you also have to become his children according to the spirit and have the spirit of Mishyaka in you. If you're an uh, 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 Arab by the term, understand your father Abraham, he prayed unto Ahaya for you. That you will live. And Ahaya heard him for, for Abraham's sake. So, may those of the children of Ishmael, and of course, every Gentile, every man of every nation, we have to repent and turn on Talahim. Let's continue, please. And this is not the same Alahim, as the Alahim of the religions, the mainstream religions. No, it is not. So, come back unto Ahaya. That delivered the, the Israelites out of Egypt. Yes. And that made the covenant with Abraham, your father. Yes. So, just to clarify that. Right. It is essential to understand the Allah that we are speaking of is Ahaya Ashere Ahaya. The Allah of Allah He is calling for all his people to turn unto him. The book of Jubilees tells us. It says, this is, a, wow, this is actually pertaining to this discussion here. Um, Jubilee chapter 15, verse 18, it says, And Abraham said unto Elohim, Oh, that Ishmael might live before you. And Elohim said, Yea, and Sarah also shall bear you a son, and you shall call his name Ichikakwa. And I will establish my covenant with him, an everlasting covenant, and for his seed after him. And as for Ishmael, also have I heard you, and behold, I will bless him, and make him great, and multiply him exceedingly. He shall beget twelve princes, and I will make him a great nation. But my covenant will I establish with Ichikakwa, whom Sarah, or Chere, shall bear to you in these days, in the next year, and he left off speaking with him, and Alahayim went up from him, and Abraham did according as Ahayah Alahayim had said unto him, and he took Ishmael his son, and all that were born in his house, and whom he had bought with his money, every male in his house, and circumcised the flesh of their foreskin. Now on the selfsame day was Abraham circumcised, and all the men of his house, and all those whom he had brought with money from the children of the stranger were circumcised with him. This law is for all the generations forever. And there is no circumcision of the days and no omission of one day out of the eight days. For it is an eternal ordinance ordained and written on the heavenly tablets. And everyone that is born the flesh of whose foreskin is not circumcised on the eighth day belongs not to the children of the covenant which Ahaya made with Abraham, but to the children of destruction. Nor is there moreover any sign on him that he is Ahaya's, but he is destined to be destroyed and slain from the earth and to be rooted out of the earth. For he has broken the covenant of Ahaya, his Alahayim. Verse 27, for all the angels of the presence and all the angels of sanctification have been so created from the day of their creation. And before the angels of the presence and the angels of sanctification, he has sanctified Israel that they should be with him and with his holy angels. And do you command the children of Israel and let them observe the sign of this covenant for their generations as an eternal ordinance? And they will not be rooted out of the land. For the command is ordained for a covenant that they should observe it forever among the children of Israel. 
for Ishmael and his sons and his brothers and Esau. So talking about Ishmael, the children of Keturah, and Esau, which are the other children that came from Abraham, Ahaya did not cause to approach him, and he chose them not because they are the children of Abraham, because he knew them, but he chose Israel to be his people, and he sanctified it and gathered it from amongst all the children of men. For there are many nations and many peoples, and all are his, and over all has he placed spirits in authority to lead them astray from him. So this is why we have to understand the religions come from the spirits of error. This is why we all have to turn on to the true Alahayim, Ahaya Alahayim, the Alahayim of the Hebrews, the Alahayim of the true Hebrews, the children of Israel that are in Mishyak and Yache. He goes on to say, But over Israel he did not appoint any angel or spirit, for he alone is their ruler. And he will guard them and require them at the hand of his angels and his spirits and at the hand of all his powers in order that he may guard them and bless them that they may be his and he may be theirs from henceforth and forever so may we understand it's in ahaya alahim the alahim of the hebrews that salvation lies we have to turn on to the true religion of keeping the commandments abiding in the faith of Yache, Meshiaka, and bearing the fruits of the Spirit. And we got verse 21. We had read verse 21 already. Right here. All right. But my covenant will I establish for Ishishakwa, which Chitty shall bear unto thee at this set time in the next year. And we got further understanding of what was transpiring, because in Isaac his seed would be called, hence all other nations were counted as Gentiles. This is how we understand why though the Ishmaelites and the Edomites come from the blood of Abraham and the children of Keturah come from the blood of Abraham, but in Isaac are the, the nation of the Hebrews actually counted for. And we thank Ahaya that through the spirit of Mishiach Yache, Ishmaelites, Keturahites, Midianites, Edomites, and the other nations of the Gentiles have this opportunity to partake in the blessing of Abraham through the spirit of Mashiach as circumcising the heart of all men unto sanctification by the purging of our hearts from dead works, the purging of our conscience by his blood, that we may serve the living Allah in sincerity and newness of life. Now we touch here in Barnabas, we will get more edification from Barnabas himself to understand that the true circumcision was always of the heart. It's in Barnabas chapter 9. Barnabas chapter 9 verse 1. Furthermore, he said concerning the ears, How that it is our heart which he circumcised. Ahaya saith in the prophet, With the hearing of the ears they listen to me. And again he saith, they that are afar off shall hear me with their ears, and shall perceive what I have done. And be ye circumcised in your hearts, saith Ahaya. We continue to. Again he says, Hear, O Ichiriala, for thus saith Ahaya Elohim. And again the spirit of Ahaya prophesies, Who is the one who wants for life forever? Let him clearly hear the voice of my servant. Again he says, Hear, O heaven, and give ear, O earth. For Ahaya has said these things as a witness. And again he says, Hear the word of Ahaya, you rulers of his people. And again he says, Hear, O children, the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Thus he circumcised our hearing, that once we heard the word we might believe. Right. But even the circumcision in which they trusted has been nullified. For he has said that circumcision is not a matter of the flesh. Hmm. They violated his law because an evil angel instructed them. And there we see that the circumcision was not a matter of the flesh, meaning your circumcision really needed to be in your heart. Right. That's why he went on to say that they broke his law. Because the circumcision wasn't in our hearts to keep his commandments, hence we broke his law. And it was no profit to us being physically circumcised. Right. That's why Paul said that for circumcision verily profited, 
if thou keep the law. That's right. But if thou keep not the law, thy circumcision is counted as uncircumcision. And even touching on that, when you're going to Romans chapter 2, verse 26, it says, Therefore, if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law, mm. shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision? Yeah, that's so, very interesting. So, right, if a Gentile and you're uncircumcised, but you're circumcised in the heart, it's going to be counted for circumcision <laughs> better than the flesh. Right. And also in verse 27, it says, And shall not the uncircumcision, which is by nature, mm. if it fulfill the law, judge thee who by the letter and circumcision doeth transgress the law? So the Gentiles that are keeping the law and partaking in the covenant through the heart, if they're keeping the law, they're going to be judging the wicked Israelites that are not keeping it, those that are circumcised in the flesh, because you chose not to circumcise your heart and to keep the commandment. So it's, it's very interesting that. Indeed, what you went into is very interesting because we want to look at this so that the brothers and sisters of Israel and the Gentiles can understand when Paul's talking about the letter of the law, right. he's talking about animal sacrifice. Right. Because he says, and shall not the uncircumcision can you please give us a definition for the word for uncircumcision it's g203 can you please give us the uh, strong, strong definition please okay it says uh the purpose by implication an uncircumcised that is gentile so we see that the term circumcision is used to refer to the gentiles right. and now it says and shall not uncircumcision which is by nature. Can you click on the word nature to confirm this is not talking about Israelites, please? Uh, nature means growth. Mm -hmm. This is G5449. Okay. Growth. Germination or expansion. That is by implication. Natural production. Lineal descent. Lineal descent. As we know when it talks about uncircumcision by nature, it's talking about Gentiles that are not of the lineage of the Israelites right. so we can understand that entirely and it goes on to say in Romans chapter 2 verse 27 if it fulfill the law that's talking about the commandments the law of faith believing in Yahweh and bearing fruits of the spirit if it fulfill the law judge thee who by the letter so instead of abiding in the faith the law of righteousness of faith in Yahweh the Israelite is trusting in animal sacrifice, which is the letter of the law, which the letter kill it. Because in the letter of the law, animal sacrifice can't purge a conscience from sin. Mm -hmm. And that's when he went on to explain he is not the Judah is one outwardly, but is the Judah is one inwardly. Wow. So praise our hand for that, for the edification to understand that the Gentiles very much have the opportunity to partake. If they fulfill the law, they'll be counted righteous. They'll be counted as circumcision in the heart counted as the seed in faithful Abraham. Now, the circumcision of the flesh, the outward flesh, was the seal that was given to the Israelites. Right. And is what Ahaya commanded, and is what we do. We still do it in sub-Saharan Africa, and even the native the aboriginals of the Americas and whatnot, they were still doing circumcision. Now, what's interesting to understand, we have been talking about how the words are spirit and they are life, right? right. It's interesting to know, the Israelites that came out of Egypt with all that great substance, all the gold and silver and the raiment of the Egyptians, they left out, they were circumcised in the flesh. But they perished because they were not circumcised in the heart. And this is the admonition for the Israelites to understand we cannot trust in our flesh as Israelites by blood. But we have to become Israelites in the spirit and keep the commandments of Ahayah Lahayim. Because the true circumcision was actually always of the heart. Also, those same men that receive the Spirit by faith, when they have children on the eighth day, those men of Israel, they're going to circumcise that child on the eighth day because they know that's what the law says. This is what was being discussed in the New Testament. So we have a good understanding of that. All right, let's continue in uh, Barnabas there. Yes, yeah. 9 verse 5. Yes, please. He says to them, Thus saith Ahayah Elohim, Here is where I find a commandment. Do not sow among the thorns. Be circumcised to your Adonai. And what does he say? 
circumcise your hardened hearts and do not harden your necks. Mm -hmm. Or consider again, saith Ahia, all the nations are uncircumcised in their foreskin, mm -hmm. but this people is uncircumcised in their hearts. But you will say, surely the people have been circumcised at the seal. And we did receive the seal of circumcision as we read in Genesis chapter 17. But there's more. Continue. But every Syrian and Arab and all the priests of the idols are circumcised as well. So then, do these things belong to their covenant? Showing that the circumcision it was more than the physical <laughs> circumcision to partake in the covenant of Abraham. Even the people of Egypt are circumcised. <laughs> so he's showing how other nations do circumcision. That's hence. We yes, we get circumcised, but that's not where our confidence is because other nations are circumcised. Okay. Our confidence in Mishyaka Yashi that gave us the circumcision of the heart to make us true Israelites. Mm -hmm. And for the Israelites who were not circumcised because they grew up being Hellenized, they trust in the Mishyaka Yashi too because they receive the circumcision of the heart through him. That's right. Mm -hmm. Continue. Thus learn about the whole matter fully, children of love. For Abraham, the first to perform circumcision, was looking ahead in the spirit to Yahweh when he circumcised. And there we see Abraham was looking ahead to Yahweh. Because when you're looking forward to Yahweh, Yahweh is the circumcision of the heart. Okay? With all that we're talking about, please understand, brothers and sisters, we're not saying that the Israelites don't get circumcised. Right. We're just speaking on what the true circumcision is. The circumcision of the heart. You have a child born on the eighth day, that, is, that male child, you definitely circumcise that male child. That's, right. that's what the law says. You're definitely not teaching against it. If you're an adult that had not known the ways of Allah and you find out the truth by the hearing of faith, and the Messiah can dwell it in you, and he's leading you to keep his commandments and work in all righteousness and bear fruits of the Spirit, abide in the faith of Messiah Yache. Yes. To be in part his Holy Spirit unto you, you don't have to go back to the physical sacrifice because you receive the spiritual sacrifice that's right which is more profitable because the spirit is eternal as yache had said to thomas that the true circumcision in spirit has become completely profitable for us now for the children of israel as abram looked unto yache there's understanding for us as to why the circumcision of a man child on the eighth day is important as you all know from studying with us, Barnabas chapter 15, verse 3 to 4 shows that the seven days Allah spake of in the beginning was referring to 7,000 years. 6,000 years in this world, then Christ comes to reign for a thousand years, which would be that seventh day. Now take heed to the eighth day after Christ's reign. In that eighth day, the Father comes down to dwell with his creation for eternity, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 24. And all people that believed in his Son shall be changed into incorruptible spiritual beings, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 50 to 52. Now today we learned, according to Jubilees chapter 15, verse 27, that angels have been created circumcised from the beginning, and Israel has been sanctified to be with them according to Ahiah's will. And the prophets and Paul confirm this account of Jubilees to be true, and that the Israelites are ordained to be ministers serving here in the earth, even as the angels minister and serve in the heavens. Thus, Israel has to circumcise the man child on the eighth day for the duration of their time in flesh and blood. But in the eternity when the Father comes down and all believers are changed into incorruptible, all men of all nations that will be changed into angels after Christ's reign will become the same circumcised incorruptible beings. Now for Israel, this helps understand why Ahiah commanded the man child to be circumcised on the eighth day for an everlasting covenant as Israel has been sanctified by him to be with his holy angels. And it is a testimony of the incorruptible beings they are to become in the eternity with Allah as his ministers through Yahweh in that eighth day. 
Thus the circumcision is preparation for the spiritual things to come, and it's more important to be circumcised in the heart, in the spirit, by Christ, to be true Jews inwardly, having Yahweh in us, so that we can partake in these everlasting covenants of Abraham. While also, now that we know of the faith of Christ, we are sure to circumcise our man-child on the eighth day to have them partake in the covenant of our father Abraham and our everlasting father, Yahweh Christ. Now for the Gentiles, Ahia sanctified Israel according to his own will, as we read in Jubilees chapter 15, verse 27 to 29. So the Holy Spirit commanded no such thing for you all to circumcise your flesh, according to the apostles in Acts chapter 15, since Israel was called by name. Yet now you know your circumcision is of Christ in the Spirit, which is completely profitable, as Yahshe told Thomas. And this circumcision makes you to be the children of Abraham through faith, to partake in the promises of Abraham to come wherein you will be incorruptible angels that are circumcised in that eighth day of eternity with your brethren of Israel and with the Lamb, which is Christ, and with Ahaya, Alahayim, the father of us all. So as the apostle ordained, we're not going to trouble you that turned unto Alahayim from among the Gentiles and all we exhort you unto, as the apostle did, is that you abstain from the pollution of idols and from fornication, and from things strangled, and from blood, as it seemed good unto the Holy Spirit and to the apostles, to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things, that you abstain from meats offered to idols, and from blood, and from things strangled, and from fornication, from which if you keep yourselves, you shall do well. So, if you do those things, you shall do well, and also, you have the exhortation from David, wherein he said, Be afraid of Ahaya, creator of heaven and fire, the sea and the earth, the wet and the dry, the heat and the cold, the mineral, the vegetation, the living and the speaking, the spheres, the Pleiades and Orion, the sun and the moon, the substantial and the spiritual, the wandering stars, the senses, and everything. All these were created and made without a blemish by Allah Almighty. His name is Ahaya. And if thou do this, observing the commandments that were ordered to the children of Noah, thy father, then good will be yours all thy days. For we are his allies. We are different from thee by the law of truth, sealed by the seal of the Almighty called the children of Allahim of truth. And therefore we have to obey the whole law, for ye are commanded by the name, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel. And he has not dealt so with any nation as he did with us. For he chose us, and not for any reason, but for the great love he loved us. So, you all will do well if you obey the ordinances by the Holy Spirit through the apostles, and good will be yours all your days if you keep the commands of your father Noah. And the commands of your father Noah were when Noah enjoined his children ordinances and commandments and judgments that he knew. When he exhorted his sons to observe righteousness and to cover the shame of their flesh and to bless their creator and honor father and mother and love their neighbor and guard their souls from fornication and uncleanness and all iniquity. And to observe the commands of your father, to observe righteousness, cover your shame of your flesh, and to love your neighbor and guard your soul from fornication and uncleanness and all iniquity. You have Moses of old time being priest and read every Sabbath. You can get understanding of righteousness to Abstain from all uncleanness and iniquity. So, I'd like to pause there okay. and pick up, uh, and we will continue this in another video. So, we hope this was edifying.
And uh, please, you have a comment section and also the email to ask questions or the comments and to edify on whatever might have not seemed to be understood. May I be with us and help us and be according to this world to show us the understanding and we all get edified together on the truth. So may I be magnified in all those that call upon Yachi and those that believe in Ahaya, Ashri Ahaya of all nations, that we will be sanctified by the spirit of holiness in our hearts, leading us unto all righteousness and to bear the fruits of the spirit, inviting in the faith and patience of Mishiach Ayachi. Anything else? Good. Shalom. HRC, 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 HRC,